Hey, Vampire Logan here. We are uh, playing some D&D tonight, uh, continuing the Wild Beyond the Witchlight uh, campaign that I started quite a while ago, and um, we have finally gotten back to it. Uh, so we still have uh, uh, Calypso and Mimsy, and we're adding two new players tonight. Um, so we're just going to get... Uh, them set up and uh, some backstory into the uh, uh, to integrate them into the campaign. But first, we're just gonna get a little recap here. Um, it's been a while, and I haven't uh, gone back too far over everything. Um, so I'm just gonna like uh, summarize what I can remember of what happened. So the two characters um, that are here, Calypso basically uh, came here with another character who is no longer uh, in, so uh, Calypso's here to basically um, do a mission for a warlock. Um, I can't even remember his name now. But uh, the warlock uh, said that he would give her uh, uh, basically his inheritance of his, all his treasure if uh, she would go and find out what happened to his patron, Zabilna. And um, so she's here looking for a way to, to get into... Uh, uh, bay realm called uh, the Prismere and uh, she has uh, investigated a bunch of the um, uh, rides here and uh, attractions and found a, a Kenku troublemaker who was uh, um, kind of heckling the the uh, entertainers and uh, causing other problems and stealing someone's voice and uh the, the uh, um, Calypso and the other character found out some of that stuff and then uh, met Mimsy. I can't remember, does Mimsy know you guys or just you just met here? Min Mimsy knew me. I stole something from him too. Okay. So Mimsy, <laughs> yeah. but Mimsy was pretty forgiving <laughs> and so didn't hold any grudge. Which is unusual for a dwarf. <laughs> Mimsy is a different kind of dwarf. Uh, so Mimsy uh, met the two of them, and then not too long after that, the other character um, was called away by some family uh, business, and um, so now it's the two of them uh, still trying to find uh, Zabilna and the Prismere. Uh, before he, the other one left, he managed to steal uh, the... Um, which thing was it? Was the uh, pocket watch? From Mr. Yes. Mr. Uh, Witch. Yes, I think so. I'm and sure. yeah, and so you guys have that, um, and uh, you guys are kind of just sort of investigating some more about the uh, uh, the uh, carnival, in just to wait until the um, final crowning of the of the uh, what's it called again? The monarch. The the monarch, yeah, the the yeah. the wishlight monarch, crowning of the wishlight monarch, and so I think you guys are somewhere around. It, it shows the sort of um, progression along these eight uh, stages, and you already did the big top uh, extravaganza, where you uh, did a performance of some knife throwing, and uh, were able to impress. Uh, the carnival owners, Mr. Witch and Mr. Light, and that was when you uh, kind of got the opportunity to, to pickpocket Mr. Witch of his uh, magic um, pocket watch, uh, which has uh, some social powers to do with the carnival, and he will definitely need this back. I think you talked to um, Burley about his plan that you needed to do that, and you had already done it, so... Yes. Um... And so, to so in order to get a straight answer out of them, you kind of need to bargain with them. So you have your bargaining chip. Uh, you have a, a basically a chance of um, becoming the Witchlight Monarch, which will give you another audience with the uh, owners. And uh, it's basically the person who's crowned the Witchlight Monarch is usually the one who has contributed the most to making um, uh, people happy at the carnival. And so you had done so by um, 
basically solving the problem of what happened to the guy who works at the Hall of Illusions, uh, what happened to his voice, the Kenku had stolen it, and you guys convinced the Kenku to give it back, and then he was able to reunite with his love, the, uh, I think it was a mermaid from Silversong Lake. And also, there was someone who tried to uh, propose before going in the Hall of Illusions. And a, a, a weird voice had come out and laughed at him. And so he'd run in there kind of upset when he proposed to his uh, fiance or to his girlfriend, I guess. And then she had, yeah, there was two halflings, I think. And so you guys went in there and sort of found some weird stuff going on in there. And then saved him from stepping into a, a mirror, and brought him back out, yes. and reunited him with his, his um, his love, and got them back together. So these combination of things kind of set up the carnival to be um, uh, pretty high on the on the uh, happiness chart. So you guys are doing pretty well for that. Uh, then after that, I think all got resolved. I think you went over, you did some carnival games. Somebody wrestled some goblins. I think it was Mimsy. Mimsy, yeah. <laughs> it was like a pretty quick, quick bout. They they failed on a, on their uh, first roll and kind of got pinned right away. <laughs> and then uh, I think that was after that was when you went to Lost Property. I for, I forget why you were going we there. The, we did the snow races too. Oh yeah, snail races. Yeah, you had a really good snail race. I think it was uh, Calypso who won that one. I did, because I threatened to turn the snail into soup. <laughs> yeah, that's you right. Win. <laughs> oh no, yeah, you're right. You were just ahead oh, yeah, the no, whole time. Place, you came in yeah. second, that's right. Yeah, it was like a kind of no contest. Mimsy would just got her early lead and just kept getting more and more ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, then you ended up the lost property you heard. Uh, you saw a displacer beast uh, talking to some uh, children or taking care of some children. And uh, and you found out about his uh, lost child that had run off and disappeared uh, like a week ago or something like that. And uh, so you were going to, uh, you were very moved by his uh, sadness and, uh, and you were vowing to uh, go find the displacer beast kitten and I yes. think that is where we ended off so um, we have two new players uh, let's get a little bit of backstory from them so first let's uh, talk about Zach Straven half elf rogue do you want to give your backstory? Or can I or do you want me to just read it? Read it out. You can read it out. Okay. But I'm very good with um, talking to people and I wouldn't say manipulating. But I am good at telling people doing something wrong. So vigilante-ish. Okay. Yes, kind of Batman, but not Batman. <laughs> okay, he's playing not Batman. Okay. <laughs> um, I know one of them is one, if not both, are looking at adopting my child. Like oh, we don't know if we're gonna adopt yet. It might be just me because I don't know if me and him will hit it off yet because he is half human. <laughs> Oh, yeah, your backstory. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, my backstory, man. Yeah, she had trauma, too, so we're, we might click. I don't know. But she's a woman, so, you know. Yeah. Conflict. Okay, so let me just check. Is there any backstory in here? Oh, okay, so you don't have anything in the in the notes there. Oh, and you're a haunted one, so that's... Um, I can speak to spirits. Oh, okay. So you have some dark uh, past or faced an unimaginable horror. Okay. 
No parents. <laughs> I've seen some things. I know some things. Yeah, so someone sees this and may um, choose to take up the fight alongside you. Okay. Um, so how... <laughs> this is going to be a weird one, but how does your character end up at the witch like carnival? Draven? Yeah, Dra Zax Draven. I think I apparated there. I just kind of just teleported to a point. Okay, so just... let's say, um, do, do you have like some kind of driving goal or something to find something or help someone or recover something or save somebody, anything like that? In particular? I, I think I just apparated to a different place and I felt like, I felt like people need help with something. Okay, so, so let's say there. let's say you were shadowing. You're you're sort of a um like a Robin Hood type, right? So you you would like be the type that might like break into a house to steal something from an evil man and return it to the people. Yes. Okay, so let's say you were doing something like that. You were on a quest to retrieve something for someone and um you had recovered the item and had returned it, but the wizard who you took it from uh, uh, found out about it and was chasing you, casting spells at you, and you ended up um, uh, going through uh, a portal to escape, and it sent you uh, directly into the Witchlight Carnival. And uh, you... Um, and you knew that this was, uh, like the carnival was going to be like disappearing soon because it kind of, it wraps up into a bunch of little like small containers. And so you ended up in there just as it was closing up and, uh, you kind of fell asleep in this sort of, uh, fey dream state. And then you have just now, uh, woken up. <laughs> and you're in you're actually um trapped inside of an object in the lost property and that object just happened to be the thing that calypso took as she was um uh yes. looking through the lost property to find i don't even know what you were looking for but i think you were just looking for something to steal anything cool looking or valuable or sharp and pointy okay so i'm gonna say it was a, a ring that you found with an interesting yes. pulsing gem and then uh, you went and found that there was a one of the, uh, the two children that was playing with the Displacer Beast uh, ran off. And then you guys went and got him and I think brought him back. And so uh, when you were um, on your way back, I'm going to say that uh, Zax Draven just appeared out of that glowing ring. And so yes. we will have that happened in just a sec and I'm going to jump over to Ven Moria and we're going to get your backstory is is one of the the people here not not able to speak no I'm here okay you can all right then uh, uh yeah cause... yeah you had mentioned um rogue that uh someone wouldn't be able to speak so oh uh, that's a different um, person he able to make it and he oh. won't be able to make it so it's just gonna be um this uh the vin where that one is gonna be his replacement basically because he won't okay. be able to do this for a little while okay so we're just gonna do the four okay sounds good okay so vin moria what's your um character like and uh backstory this is a i'm just gonna pull up the character sheet here let's see what you have to say Okay, so we have a ranger, a ladrin. So a ladrin is an elf from, from the Fey realm, so you're familiar with the circus from it traveling around. Uh, and you've mm -hmm. heard of heard of the legend. Um, you also have the sage background, so that's 
you spent years learning the lore of the multiverse, so you know a lot about the teleporting between planes and stuff like that. So, uh, how do you uh, describe your character? Very opinionated. Okay. I could be an ass sometimes, or I could be the nicest person you ever meet. Okay. And I have on your, uh, interesting. Okay. I'm going to put that off screen. We'll read out what people would know. Um, so it says you like to listen to every side of the argument of an argument before making your own judgment. Mm -hmm. And you speak slowly when talking to idiots, which is almost everyone else compared to you. Okay. <laughs> that should be interesting. Um, okay. So how do we think your character um, came across the carnival? I lost a bet. <laughs> One of the fey people. Uh, so you're basically, you are serving there, like you work there? Yeah. Okay, let's... Just for the time being, until I got out. Let's uh, put you in one of the small um, uh, booths that um, uh, does, like, fortune telling. But you just do use, like, your knowledge of things to, <laughs> to give people fortunes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a, like, uh, an informed kind of, uh... Be like, she looks down and sees someone's shoe untied, like, you're going to trip and fall within the next ten minutes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you have... Very sarcastically. Yes. So, and the ranger... So what's your ranger um, kind of thing about... Well, after my whole family got murdered, I had to go out on my own. So it's like an out for revenge kind of thing? Yes. Yes. Okay. And did you put I down was a your... child when they got killed. Did you put down a favored enemy? Or is that still a thing? I don't even know if that's still a thing with me. Oh, yeah, it is. I think it, it is, is, but I think I might have accidentally skipped that part we were doing. But it's probably just humans. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I would say it's just humans in general right now until... They convinced me otherwise that not all of them are bad. Oh, it says you can take a type of favorite enemy, like aberrations, beasts, celestials, etc., or you can choose two races of humanoid as favorite enemies, such as orcs or something like that. So yeah, humans and one other thing, I guess. Do you think they would have used any kind of monsters or other monstrous creatures? Mm, I don't remember because I was so little. Hmm. Is there anything else you want to be able to about, use your skills with? An ab what is an aberration? Because that's like... That's like sort of um, mutant kind of monsters. Well, she yeah, that'll so work. Little. Yeah, because yeah, I was going to say she was so little that that's what they would look like, so maybe that's just what it is. Um, So that would be just the one choice then, so all aberrations. Or you could take two hmm. specific enemies. So if you're if you're choosing humanoids because humanoids are so common, it's you have to pick ah. two specific ones. But these other ones are, are less common, so you could pick like a whole group. I think halflings... Would be good because they look most like humans they're just tiny yeah we, yeah we can do that i mean you're not gonna run into a lot of halfling enemies but sure yeah. <laughs> um it'll happen okay uh so humans and halflings then sounds good okay uh Okay, so that's, um, or you could pick something like Undead. That's a pretty good 
category. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, okay, so that's um, so you're sort of on this quest to do that, but you while you were doing it, you got uh, kind of into a situation where you had to pledge your service to the Witchlight Carnival. And um, so I'm just going to say you're in one of these booths right across from the uh, from the lost property lost property cart, and uh, yeah, you have your little fortune teller booth there. Okay, mom. Okay. And uh, so you can uh, let's just say you're interested in what's happening with these people over there, and you you can your your shift is over, so you can wander over and see what's going on. Okay, so I'm gonna. So there. He's gonna pop out of my ring. I stole it fair and square. And poof, out pops Zach Draven next to Calypso. As you're walking back you're still, to the uh, display you're service. Just a loud exclamation of what? Mm -hmm. Okay. More of a beep beep. <laughs> What? I didn't hear that. Hey, what's up? I'm here. More behind your shoulder. I'm not giving your ring back. You still have it. Yes. It's not glowing anymore. <laughs> I, I stole it. Fair and square. It's mine now. I don't need no ring. I'll assume you guys are a little... Anymore. Further away from the lost property, so the guy doesn't see you. <laughs> okay, come on. Okay, and did uh, you want to see what's going on over there, Ven Moria? I just walk up and trying to figure out what's going on. Somebody's arguing about a ring. I'm going to say you saw the whole thing. So you saw her go to the lost property. You saw her, um, uh, the kids run, the kid run off. Uh, you saw her go, you saw her steal something out of the lost property, but then also go and bring the kid, kid back to the, uh, displacer beast. And also you saw her choose to help the displacer beast find his kitten, his child. Mm okay. So. Come on, kiddo. She's kind of, you know, good and bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, come on. All right, so uh, it doesn't look like anybody's going to steal your, your ring, Calypso. She just kind of like no, I ain't shoves doing it, it in, in a in a jacket pocket, like inside of her shirt, like just in case. No, okay. she doesn't trust anyone. <laughs> All right. Ends up missing later. Yeah, she probably like drops it because she's probably got like a hole in her shirt. She's had the same clothes for years, you know. Oh, and did the two new people get a description of your two characters before? Um, yeah, I know that my child is an untrusting horrible demon child <laughs> literally a tiefling <laughs> yes much just a friendly dwarf that's like a niffler squeaky voice <laughs> yes yes i didn't i didn't tell you all about her character he's a he's a very buff dwarf who's about the same size as my 11 year old and he sounds like a girl so <laughs> his name yeah. is carlton but we called him mimsy for short Carlton? Love it. <laughs> yes. Carlton Grimm. Uh -huh. ah. So um maybe you should uh, let them let's let's assume you guys get to know each other a little bit. We can skip past that and just say that um you guys let them know about uh your quests to find um do, would you let them know about the quest to find the uh, the warlock's patron, or would you just say you're gonna go and try and find the uh, displacer beast cat kitten? I would just say about the displacer beast because I'm not gonna tell them about treasure that I'm gonna keep for myself. Yeah. 
I don't think he even told Carlton about it. I did not. <laughs> he doesn't know. No one needs to know. Well, I won't say nothing. Okay, and um, I think... Did you find out any clues about the Displacer Beast kitten? You you know that he often ran no. around this... Oh, yeah, he did. That was all he said, was something about him like running around an area. But then that... Hit, he knows better than to go to like the the barrier or something like that. Yeah, he would stay inside the bounds yeah. of the carnival and would come back at any end of the day, anytime. And so, when he disappeared, the last anyone saw of him was somewhere near the Hall of Illusions. Oh no! I think I know what happened. All right, so I guess we'll go to the Hall of Illusions. Then. And just yeah, just to remind you, so when you saw the halfling, you had seen him staring into one of the mirrors and inside that mirror you had seen a pig-faced pig person. Someone yeah. wearing a, a child wearing a pig mask, a kind of creepy pig mask, and they were beckoning the halfling into the mirror and he almost stepped in until you guys came and pulled him away. Alright, well I guess we need to go back over there again. Alright. I hate it here. <laughs> Yes. I can say one thing. Pig mask. Nope. <laughs> What's <Yes>. that? Nope. <laughs> I didn't hear that. What was that? Somebody pulled the pig mask. Nope. The pig mask, yeah. Creepy. Okay, we'll put you back over here. And uh, you come back to, uh, what was his name? I need to reread the story again. The mime? Was it the mime? The mime, yeah. Who, who can now speak? Yeah, Candlefoot, that's right. And, uh, I don't remember his name. Yeah. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good memory for how long has it been since we last played. Yeah, so Candlefoot is there. He's still uh, grateful. Um, yeah, he's still grateful for um, you guys uh, fixing his situation, both with his voice and with his uh, fiance. Yes. Uh, let me see. Where? What is this one? And uh, so for those of you who haven't seen this place, it's a, a large tent painted with a mural of shifting images that show grinning fairies diving into pools of color. Uh, the helical stripes of the tent is a pointed, the tent's pointed canopies rotate in spirals. Uh, and the whole display seems to be designed to befuddle onlookers. And then the... Uh, um, guy stands in front of you in muted clothes. Um, he's, uh, in this case, smiling at you. And, uh, so he says, oh, is there anything I can do for you? Did you see, did you see a little displacer beast child thing come in here anytime and, like, since the carnival's been up. Uh, he says, you know, think some people who um, disobey the the rules of the of the carnival sometimes disappear. But it doesn't seem to be, uh, um, you know, any of the people in the Witchlight Carnival. But I, the last place I saw, um, is the cub's name is Star. The last time I saw Star, 
was uh, was around here, and I apparently after um, his father was looking for him, I I guess I was the only the last one to see him. So he was he was like definitely in like this area, like your yeah. I warned him not right to here. go not to go into the hall though. Do you know anything about a little pig-looking thing in there? Just curious, for no reason. He goes, I've heard people say they see pig-faced child, but I've never seen it. I don't go in there either. It gives me the creeps. Well, good on you. <laughs> I hate it here. Let's go, guys. <laughs> no. <laughs> she just, like, kind of um, lets everybody pass her and uses the three of them as human shields <laughs> while she walks in a couple feet, like, behind, you know? You're going she, into the Hall of Illusions? more trauma. Yeah, because we're going to give it another go, I guess, and see. Because there's no way we're going to get lucky enough to just look under the deck of the boards right there and see him hot, taking a nap, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, he's been gone a week, so that's a pretty long nap. <laughs> I mean, I could do that, but... <laughs> so I guess we're going in. Out. Okay. You said you call out. I said I feel like being, being called out. <laughs> I mean, me too, but it's fine. But on that note, we're figuring it out. Um, we'll figure it out. She kind of like at the door too. They only notice that she's that far behind them because she stops at the door to scream, where the f*** are you at, you little shit? And then <laughs> listens for, like, maybe two seconds. And she's like, alright, he's not here, let's go, it's time to leave, we'll go look somewhere else. And then I grab you. <laughs> it's like, nope, we're going, nope, we're going. We're staying. Now you're a horrible person, you know that? Don't, don't even look at me like you're happy and shit, because I know you're not inside. Well, continue you on. I don't like you either um, now. <laughs> okay, so as you um go into the to the car, to the um Hall of Mirrors, uh, you'll notice, uh, and those of you who haven't been in here before will notice um that uh, as you go into uh, the the mirrors that are in the earlier part. Uh, show you uh, your your reflection is of a younger version of yourself. So it starts out in the earlier ones as a um, as like a baby, <laughs> and then as you move through, the the age of of your reflection gets a little bit older. And then uh, you can um, so so. What would your uh, what would your t uh, we already know what um Calypso and Mimsy look like. I think we'd oh, actually Mimsy, you haven't gone in there either, right? No, I've gone in there. Okay. Yeah, I think we went through a description of yes. you guys looking in there and seeing your, your different aged versions of yourself. So let's say um Zax and uh Ven Moria, what what is what does your character look like as a small child? A mischievous person. <laughs> All right, little mischievous, uh, mischievous um, uh, Aladrin. Always getting into shit. With uh, yes. extra long ears for the size of her head. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't grow in my ears quite yet. Yeah. <laughs> and then Zax. Hmm. What would your hey, uh Excuse me. So my dad played games and um love the same games. Then I came that person. So oh, he's uh he like his um I saw loving other people and stuff like that. 
So he's like a um, happier kid and full of full of uh, um, fun. Yes. Okay, so very different than your current uh, situation then. Yeah. The dark brooding character. So the others see that and... Yeah, Calypso like looks over at the girl's reflection and um, for like half a second puts aside the fact that it's a woman and is kind of intrigued with what that looks like and then she turns and looks at the other reflection and she's like, oh, you're so fucking happy. That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and as you as you move through there, uh, you see um, the reflection sort of ages as you get further in, and uh, eventually it's kind of mashes your current appearance. And then as you uh, move further in, uh, it starts to go into an older appearance. So what you might look like when you get older. And then so. Uh, uh, describe what your character starts to look like as they get older. Longer oh. beard. Long beard. Longer mustache. Like to the floor long? Walk through. I don't, I want to look like Gandalf. <laughs> he starts to yes. look like Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> Gandalf looking so. And I'm okay with it. Yes. I've walked through certain trials and temptations to the point. A heavy, heavy a load. Long beard. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and most elves. I'm okay with it. Most elves can't grow beards, but as a half elf, you can. So yours does get. Uh, All these half elf that has a full beard. Yeah. Old and, and gray. Okay, and Ven Venmora? The older I get, the more scars you just see over time. Oh, scars. hair's longer. So looking more and more tough and, uh, and uh, experienced. Old and worn. Very. Okay. All right, you get through um, uh, kind of the, the oldest age. It doesn't go to, like, you know... Uh, like f frail age, but um, you do find uh, the mirror that you guys think um, uh, you saw. Uh, hit the the halfling's name was Reuben, so you get to that mirror that where you thought you saw Reuben, uh, but you don't see any uh, pig-faced girl anywhere in there. And I think you guys searched here before after um, you got Reuben out, and when you went back last time, you didn't find anything either. As long as I don't see a pig faced girl, I won't be slapping oh, on the mirror. It did, because I think it tried to take um, Calypso. It did, yeah. I was going to say that. Also, slashing the mirrors won't work. I already tried it. Me. Nah. Um, or did you, we break the mirror? Did you say you did? Uh, oh, yeah. They did try to take you? They did, yeah. The little pig girl, she like almost pulled me in the mirror, but um, MZ pulled me back. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so this time you don't see you don't see the the pink face girl and the mirror doesn't seem to be any different than when you last saw it. Seems like it might be a dead end now. It's probably not active. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um uh Someone needs to be in emotional pain like right now, okay? I have a plan. <laughs> um, I can't break the mirror though. Yeah, the mirrors do not um, do not get uh, broken from attacking them. Um. Can we can we ask the mirror any questions? Or is it just the mirror? It seems to be to you, to you to be just a mirror. It, th this particular one is showing you as an older person, but other than that, it's a normal mirror. Um, 
Can I roll for, for uh, like perception or something like that? Yeah. Um, investigation, maybe? Yeah, investigation, investigation would work. Investigation is what I'm going for. All right, let's take a look. You're going to go... So if, if you go to the skill tab and then go down to investigation, I think on your sheet you have a plus one. Or you could just pick it, grab a d20 and roll it, and I can just add the plus one. Yeah. Oh, let me do it. Actually, I think I can just do it for you here. Oh. Try to do investigation. Does that actually work? Uh, let me check on. Uh, what did it do? It rolled no. two dice. Oh no, yeah, do it did that. do it. it. Rolled twice though. I don't know why it rolled twice. Anyway, I'll take the first one. So yeah, that's the natural twenty. So, um, you, yeah. sorry, did you have something to say? Oh no, that was just a really good roll. Yeah. So, um, you uh, spend some time investigating this uh, mirror, and um, you don't see anything unusual about the mirror, um, but you do see, um, a uh, inscription on it in some runes, but you don't recognize the language. Mm. And also you do see um, uh, a lot of like footprints around this one in particular. Um, it seems to be a lot more like travel around this one oh, than shit. in any, any of the other ones. Oh, are you? Uh, what are you trying to do, Ben Moore? I just did something. I just did something <laughs> on intelligence. <laughs> okay, so you're. Um, I'll assume you're trying to like kind of uh, logically. Yeah, look at the scripture. Yeah. Logically figure out what's going on there, and yeah. um, uh, actually, did you uh, list any um, languages that you know? I think I did. Okay, let me just check your sheet here. Um, does it say there? Main page skills. I wasn't trying to roll yet, but it did it. Oh, there we go. You have uh, common, draconic, elvish, primordial, and undercommon. Um, and what do you have? Uh, um, what? Uh, Calypso. Me? Um. It's on the abilities tab. I wish I can look right here. Can't see it. Uh, you have common infernal and thieves can't. Okay. And then I think Mimsy, I think we already determined you didn't have. I only have common dwarvish. Yeah. So, and let's just check, uh, Zach's. Uh, okay, common deep speech, elven, these can't. Okay, so, um, yeah, nobody has the language that it's written in. So, um, you, uh, but, uh, with that natural 20 that you rolled, um, uh, Ven Moira thinks that it is probably, 
uh, written in Sylvan, uh, which is, um, but it's in a it's in a uh, kind of a ancient Sylvan language, so mm -hmm. it's it's not um, a commonly used one. And uh, it's gonna take time. Yeah, it would take you a while to translate it, but you think it um it might be a uh, um something to do with a magical um effect. Oh yeah, for sure. So you guys are pretty sure that something weird is going on with this, but you think maybe it needs some special knowledge to make use of it. You guys rolled two natural 20s to investigate it, so... <laughs> Pretty much, um, I'll get... Actually, you know what? I'll just give you the, the, um, what you... You'd probably know this. So you can tell by the inscription that it, it requires a password. And so someone, in order to activate the magic of this, would need to know, uh, the special magical phrase that it would need to activate. So... Mm. And you think that it is probably some kind of portal to another place or another dimension. Sounds about right. Yeah. Okay. You kind of could have gathered that from the fact that people are disappearing. <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously, I lost a bet to a fae and I ended up over here like, oh my god, I'm ready to get out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you Maybe. will... I, I think you can also figure out with those rolls that um, it probably goes to a single specific place and not just kind of anywhere. Mm-hmm. Where would that be? Prison. Ah. Possibly. <laughs> a prison for carnival criminals. In prison to see, Let me um, keep my lock picks. Well, I mean, the mime said he doesn't go in there, but we could still talk to him if he knows anything. All right, so you head you back know, out. If he doesn't want to talk, we can just have Mimsy inter in interrogate him and, and be all intimidating and shit. To uh, Candlefoot? Yes, if we have to. <laughs> I think Candlefoot will help you. Okay. Lying. Candlefoot feels uh, very gracious to you because you guys uh, yeah. helped him out. So, anything you ask him, I'm pretty sure he'll do. Yeah. This day right. break the mirror. So you guys, uh, the mirrors don't are resistant to being broken. Eh. Especially that one. Uh, not even our complexion can break it. <laughs> 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 All right. So you uh, head back out and talk to Candlefoot. He says, did you find um, what you're looking for in there? No, actually, it's kind of got a lock on it. You know, that's a little annoying. You know, know a password or something when you get in that mirror over there? I am not sure what you're talking about. This is just there's, a hall of illusions. No, there's not. There's a, It's not. There's a mirror in there. We just looked at it. It's got some language thing on it. She read it. He knows what it there's there's people in there and it needs a password that's what it says do you know the password no, i didn't even know that was a thing uh but no i can't think of anything that would be a password if somebody was to know the password who would it be i mean the mr witch and mr light would probably know about that they sure didn't tell me anything about that that seems pretty dangerous having something like that in this Hall of Illusions, <laughs> but it seems I was justified not All to right. go in there. She kind of like turns around and does like a little huddle and she's like, all right, so <laughs> after we get the monarch thingy or whatever, we're going to have to see him again. But we have our own business to take care of. There's still a kid somewhere in here i think are you sure there's even a kid 
So well, the, it's not like a kid. It's like a beast thingy. It's a displacer beast but child, which yeah. would be a kitten. It's a kitten. <laughs> a six-legged a kitten with tentacles. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, I'll show you guys. Oh, yeah, you guys can't really. Uh, yeah, I can show you the picture here. Here's what the um, yes. his father looks like. Uh, no, not items. Images. You came up with that. Dorlebron was his name, I think. Um, yeah, Dor Dornothal. Um, that's not it either. There it is. Uh, Yeah, this is the father. Um, so these are his. Uh, let's make this bigger. Oh, here we go. So, um, so these are his uh, tentacles up here, and he's got these uh, um, cloth uh, butterfly wings attached to them, because uh, everybody who's in the Wishlight Carnival also has, like toy butterfly wings that they wear um so mine are kind of like stuffed in a pocket because i refuse whenever mm -hmm. you see one of the people though you have to put it back on so you have to sort of w bring it out to me she just, she just like randomly pulls it out and kind of holds it at her back but looks like she's scratching her neck or something and then puts it back in just and uh just be aware that uh what the guy said about people who break the rules of the carnival <laughs> they're not gonna know how would they know <laughs> No they ain't gonna know. Don't never. I did the same no thing. One. I had them until they see. I think that was actually how you you ended up getting grabbed. Actually, as you were doing something that was breaking the rules. Oh well, that's probably why. Yeah, because yeah. I I don't wear the wings. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, this is the the guy. See, it's like a a six legged panther looking thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you guys haven't found it yet, but I'll show you the. The kitten. Okay. The kitten. Oh, oh my gosh, he's so cute. He is cute. I want to take it home. Look at him. It's just a baby. <laughs> we should totally take him home. She's like, all right. So, I don't know. I have an idea. This is probably a really bad idea. I might die, but it's fine. Um. Everybody who seems to be getting taken is either really sad, and since nobody wants to be emotionally unstable right now, someone's <laughs> got to break a rule. And I'm already doing that, so I guess I'll just walk in there and get kidnapped again. It's fine. <laughs> um. So what are you going to do then? Somebody else wants to do it. Somebody else can break a rule. I'm down for that. Anybody? Can go roll here for it right now. Yeah. Yeah. We'll roll. Whoever roll for it. Rolls. Yeah. <laughs> Roll for initiative. <laughs> Are you sure you want to do this before you meet with Mr. Witch and Mr. Light? <laughs> I have no idea. We, um, we can have a... If you're saying that, right. then it's probably a really bad idea. Um, hmm. Because basically, I'll just... I'll lay it out for you. Basically, all you have to do yeah. now to to get to the next stage of the adventure is to... Do some whatever you want for the for the rest of the the two sections of time that right, you have so left until the, the thing. Crown, we're not gonna miss getting the child, right? That's right. The That's child's the been missing. About. The kitten's been missing for a week, so it's not like another couple hours is gonna make any difference. The kitten has been missing right. for a month. Yeah. Oh no. So like beforehand too. I just realized this, but if, um, if Vin Moore has seen, like, everything that happened, like, us going to Lost and Found and everything, she would have seen Calypso starting to get emotional over there. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just realized that. And she hasn't done that all game, and it was, like, this that kicked it off. So, you saw that. That's important. I yeah. did. She seemed like I really a... didn't care at that point. 
She seemed yeah, like she a really like an angry people. teenager who doesn't want to um, like things, and then that that one thing got to her. Yeah, that's really mm-hmm. important if you do want to get close and adopt her, whether you're single or married. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, just to, to give you um, uh, like a list of things that you could do uh, for the next two um, hours or so is there are um, more like uh, kind of carnival games in different areas. Uh, most of these booths are like, you know, games of chance and stuff you can play. Uh, I think you only did two of them so far. Yeah. Uh, there's the did you guys go in the Pixie Kingdom? We did. Nope. We did that with um, the little cousin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you got but shrunk down and did we that. Could, we could do, like, just about anything again, I think, because... Yeah, yeah. Everybody, yeah. So you have the snail racing, uh, which is riding on giant snails, and, and, uh, and they actually go quite fast. Uh, there's the mystery mine, which I don't think you guys did. Uh, we did not. The bubble pop teapot is like a going in a bubble and kind of floating around the carnival. Um, the dragonfly rides are sort of a little, um, an airborne race riding on a drag- giant dragonfly. Um, the feasting orchard is, uh, there, I think there's an eating contest in there. Um, the carousel, it's like riding a, a fake horses around, but I think there's some magical part to it. Uh, the gondola swans are kind of a tame kind of uh, ride on a sort of kind of a, a boat that's shaped like a swan uh, and riding around that area and down, I think, down some of the rivers. And then Silversong Lake, you guys already saw, it was a the mermaid that is um, engaged to the uh, guy at the Hall of Illusions, um, Candlefoot. They uh, She did a song uh, in the giant clamshell there and uh, yeah was heckled by the Kenku and the big top. Uh, there's some things going on around the, in there with acrobats and stuff, but the big event was already happened at the big tr- top extravaganza where there was a whole bunch of things going on, but there's still like jugglers and, and acrobats kind of doing little things in there. And that's pretty much it. Oh, there's the Calliope, which is the um, uh, music kind of machine. Okay. So, Calypso's definitely had fun. And she's still acting like she hasn't had fun. But when they're talking about the stuff that they could do, she seems interested in the dragonfly rides if anybody wants to, like, notice that, you know? Let's go. Okay. Everybody well, for that? Of... Yes. I... Okay. No. Listening to a song that popped in my mind. My mind. Sorry. <laughs> Listening to a song. That's all I got. Okay. When we you arrive up there. The dragon um, flat rats. And so uh this um place has a, a kind of a lake there and huge um, lily pads rest on the surface of the pool glistening with phosphorescent algae and giant dragonflies use the lily pads as landing platforms buzzing loudly overhead with wings as brilliant as stained glass windows and alighting briefly to drop off and pick up excited passengers uh, near the entrance a small smiling tree turns your way and beckons you over um, a red squirrel clings to its leafy canopy, peering at you suspiciously. And you recognize this from when you first came in as the treant um, Northwind and his little buddy Red. And uh, he... There. Oh, my toe. Uh, Red is a... Um, squirrel and he is but he speaks as well oh. you're lily pads so what are they doing there 
All right. Um, so uh, I'll assume that uh, you guys also have a ticket and can use it for these events. They, um, as a, a staff member, they give you a free ticket each um, night. So then Moira has that. And then Zax actually is walking around without wings or a ticket. There might be one more oh, thing yeah. you might want to do before you go there. Lipso stole a ticket, so she's got two. Oh yeah, that's right. You stole. Um, Wait. He stole. Uh, what uh, ticket? Um, you what's his name's uh, ticket? And then he had to buy a new one. Huh. <laughs> okay, okay, so she hands you a ticket, and it's a fancy looking. Uh, I think I have a picture of it actually. I will come back and steal anything from you. Oh yeah, did you already I know? Did you already know? I um, didn't know. Clipso? Yeah, I stole something I from both stole. of them. They they don't know that she's like. You're a klepto. I don't like know her, know her. They just know that she stole something from them. You're a klepto. Did did you do that in the carnival or something in the past? Is it actually someone you know? Um, I think it no. was just like an outside of the carnival it's thing. just for fun yeah. <laughs> okay all yeah, right so. i'm pretty sure i did it outside the carnival and then they're both like you little shit when they see her there you know <laughs> <laughs> give me back my shit no i'm not partial you. to it so that she can keep it okay that makes it not fun that's the uh, ticket. I'll give your kid a piece of candy, so. I didn't show the piece other side candy. of the punch card. Candy. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, no, and the ticket has a punch, um, bunch of punch holes, eight of them to be exact. Uh, I think I think Calypso had to buy another ticket or something because you ran out. I did. Yeah, so. Um, so I have a new one, and then. The one that I gave him should only have like maybe two, three holes in it. Yeah, I think it's just got two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, you guys go in here, punch your ticket. I assume you all want to go on the Dragonfly ride? Yes. Mm hmm Yes. I mean, no, but yeah, whatever. Okay, and... You know we want to do it so bad, but we're not going to show it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, there are eight giant dragonflies. Uh, they're trained to fly their riders in a lazy figure eight around the carnival thoroughfare at a height of about 20 feet. Oh, so they actually go around the whole carnival. Yeah, it gives us a good aerial view of the That's whole That's kind of cool. Um, so uh, they get you... Um, uh, uh, set up with a dragonfly. Um, as you are just about to get on your dragonfly, after they go go over the the instructions with you, how to direct them and stuff, um, you see that a um one of the dragonflies uh, has just taken off prematurely with a patron on its back. A middle aged dwarf with a bright blue beard uh, is unfastened in his harness. And, uh, he, what does he do? Uh, so his, um, his dragonfly seems to be kind of, uh, spooked and, uh, it's starting to fly up with this guy kind of hanging half, uh, half off the saddle. Oh no. Well, that's unfortunate, isn't it? Very. Should I flip a coin to see if we go help him or not? <laughs> uh, go for it. Uh -huh. I don't know if there's a D2 in there, but Maybe. roll a D2. <laughs> or it's uh, like a D4. So D4 if you and one and two, two is a... Then it's tails. If you get two, four, then it's heads. Or three, yeah. four, then it's three, heads. Three, four, it's yeah. heads. So hit D4. D4. Yeah. And which one is help him and which one isn't? Alright. Um, I call heads for not helping. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a one. So that, that means help. 
And I see kind of one. Did she make her falls? Help him. Okay, so you're each on separate lily pads, so you'll have to like quickly jump on your ma- your. Unless you guys have some way. What's well, what are you talking about? I'm already on. I'm ready to return to go. At okay. This point. Now I have to go save the dude. Okay, so roll <laughs> um to control your mount. Roll a um animal handling check, or if you don't have oh, that, it's just a wisdom check. Wow. What are we, the the wisdom twenty. Wisdom animal handling. Yeah. Uh, D20. D20 and West. And then add your uh, animal handling. Uh, yours is zero. Wait, so. wait. Okay. No, <laughs> no. Okay. Wisdom. Um, wait. D20 on wisdom? Yeah. yeah there it is. Rolling? Yeah. So you got a 17. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, might as well all roll. Yeah, I guess so. You had wisdom and then animal handling. I got 11. Okay. So. Oh, I have a flush too. Damn. <laughs> okay. We're twins. And then Moira got the one. Okay. So no, I did the one on the help. <laughs> so then Moira was was so excited to go and uh, uh, get on this this mount that she forgot to strap herself in, and so she <laughs> completely falls off the uh, the dragonfly as it's just about to take off and lands back on the on the lily pad. It's so much fun to fall. You should totally do it, Calypso. It was so much fun. And um, Carlton and Calypso, your dragonfly just takes off like it's riding like normal and does not go in the direction of the dwarf. Um, but Zax manages to control his dragonfly to get over to the dwarf. And then, um, so you can either try to like gra- catch the dwarf or, or pull him away off of what he's hanging on his saddle, or you can go and uh, try to calm his dragonfly down and get it to fly back down. So calming the dragonfly will be another animal handling. Sorry, what what did Uh, you say? Can you calm the dragonfly down? That would be animal handling, which you have a plus zero on. Or if you want to just try and grab the dwarf, you could use a um athletics roll you have a plus one on that or um likes yeah i guess that's probably it yeah where's my athletics i'm looking for it <laughs> It should be the second page under skills. Yeah, skills. Okay. And then tap your yeah athletics number right next to it. Okay. Eight, not one like twenty. Okay, there you Natural go. twenty. Okay, so you you quickly fly your mount over there, and with with uh, panache and style, uh, um, you just grab that dwarf, flip him up in the air, and over onto the the uh, other behind your saddle, and he is uh, totally saved. And everybody uh, cheers and claps and uh, and. Uh, um, Everybody's very, very happy that you did that. And uh, you fly back over to the um, your starting point and uh, let the dwarf off. He, he decided he didn't want to go on this ride anymore. And uh, uh, he, he heads out. And then the rest of you... Uh, and then you can like fly your mount and, and catch up to the other guys who are... Their mounts are basically just taking off on them and not really listening to them. <laughs> oh, and uh, so I'll assume that... Uh, Someone helps uh, Ven Moira to get back on. Nah, this little pad's comfortable. And uh, you can roll again to see if you can control it this time. Okay. Well, um, well I am not helping her, so we're going to just keep flying. <laughs> 
flying away in some random direction it's Let taking us. See. So make another animal handling. And that one's under what? Uh, skills. Should be the first skill. Who's rolling for what? She didn't get back on my dragonfly. Oh, did you uh, get that in there? Oh, there you okay, go. I got okay, so you get back on and uh, you're able to uh, get control of yourself, but the dragonfly just flies on and it ended up just following the others, so it seems fine. And so they fly in a really, um, as, as I said, 20 feet off the ground. Uh, they kind of follow this uh, path around sort of the figure eight uh, and all through the other part of the carnival and then through here and back again. And uh, as you were flying up, uh, you saw... Um, actually, yeah, make a perception check, everybody. Um, this will be under wisdom as well. 19. Yeah. Okay, looking. Carlton. We're on uh, which light? 21. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> which light? So back on the, uh, on the skills page and... Perception. Sorry, um, you can just roll it. Just roll it twenty sided, and I'll just add the. Yours is plus two, and I think. And that's on perception. Yeah. Oh, let me hang on. I I don't know how to roll. Sorry. It's okay, I can I just roll for you. Just roll for me. Yeah. Uh perception is here. I don't know why it keeps rolling twice. Hey, we twins. Okay, so I got it. I got it. This is my roll. Right here. D20. Yeah, I see it in, in the um in the game log on D and D you got a yeah, twenty one. I rolled. Oh, he found it. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> well I'll let you take the one that I rolled for you. <laughs> yeah. Let me take the other one. <laughs> Okay, so you, uh, so everyone except Ven Moira, who's just catching up, I guess, uh, notices yeah. that, um, uh, there was, uh, a little, um, uh, you, well, actually, yeah, Calypso and, and, and Mimsy already know this guy. It's the Kenku. The Kenku was doing something on the side of the, uh, um, it was, you saw him, the, the, uh, hiding in the bushes in near the dragonfly rides and they were doing something like casting a spell or something that you think they probably made that dwarf fall. Calypso looks down and she kind of just like considers not doing anything because it's not like she did anything really bad but then she remembers that they're supposed to be making the carnival as happy as possible and she gives like the biggest 
exaggerated, unpleased sigh before she's like, how do I turn this shit around? <laughs> um, yeah, and if you, if you could control your mount, you might have been able to go over there, but... Uh, so you can do... I can, I can roll another check, but I'll probably get like a nat one. You could do an either an intimidate check to kind of like uh, chastise them, or you could do a persuasion check if you want to to uh, kind of get them to stop doing that. Uh, well, they're both a plus zero, so we're just gonna start with intimidation. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. We love that. Six. I got a six. Well, All right. Do that with yours. I'm gonna persuade my. Well, fuck you. <laughs> okay, persuade. I hope you get it now. Uh, <laughs> so, so Mimsy Nobody says, cares. Mimsy says something to uh, uh, remind the Kenku of your deal. And uh, the uh, Kenku um, sticks its tongue out at uh, at Calypso, but then looks uh, looks uh, sorry when Mimsy Mimsy flies over and says. Says, "Hey, you were supposed to. You're supposed to help us out." And then she looks kind of, "Oh, mm, all right." And then leaves. Disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> Calypso like looks it back at both of them and just is flipping each one off with either hand. <laughs> Doing the mm -hmm. double, double, double <laughs> finger there. <laughs> <laughs> This was like fuck you. <laughs> all right, so you guys get your uh, your dragonfly ride in. You get all the way around the uh, carnival. Um, you see, in each location, there's uh, something going on. Uh, the feasting orchard has uh, some people um, chanting and cheering for some uh, a couple of people at a main table who are uh, eating stuff really fast and uh, so, some kind of cupcakes or something. It looks like. And then uh, the, the carousel has, um, let's see, a procession of wooden unicorns uh, standing motionless on a circular wooden platform. Uh, you see that there are people climbing onto them, but they're uh, uh, Oh, and there's a female centaur controlling the ride. Uh, when they turn it on, suddenly the unicorn, the the wooden unicorns, shake their manes and creak to life. Uh, still wooden, but they start cantering around the carousel to the delight of their riders. Um. And then, yeah, and then you see um, the, the, uh, you notice from above that the um, centaur uh, woman there is uh, essentially, she's like, um, she seems happy to like help the people and into the carousel and, and, and running the ride, but you see something, uh, some kind of sadness about her that uh, you just sort of sense. And then you fly on. Um, you've seen the big top before, so there's not really much to see from above. Uh, oh, the gondola swans, you, you notice, um, the, uh, enormous swans glide through the water here, pulling ornate, uh, wooden gondolas, uh, draped in flowers. The swans disappear into the banks of silver mist as they wend their way down the river. Uh, they're, so, okay, so it's like a swan... A giant swan pulling a gondola boat. And uh, then you see the Silver Song Lake. There's no show going on right now of the mermaids, so there's not much going on there. And then down through the... You hear the Calliope as you fly over it. Um, that's kind of like... You know that... Ah, oh, again. Um, I always do that. <laughs> Uh, you hear the Calliope, which is like that, you know, dun, 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 kind of music. Yeah. And. Hang on a sec here. Let me get the map back. Mm, 
There we go. And uh, so you fly over that and then past the ticket booth and then down through here. Oh, don't do it again. <laughs> and then uh, you see a bunch of people uh, from the bubble teapot. Um, there's a, uh, a 20 foot tall teapot rests on a wooden platform. It's painted surface whirling with moving imagery of the fly of flying dragons, breathing steams of streams of bubbles. The door at the base of the teapot allows entry to the interior and those who enter emerge from the spout enclosed in a bubble that detaches to float off across the carnival. Uh, seven goblins sit around the platform, sipping tea from mismatched porcelain cups. Um, and you see, um, as you are flying by, you see people in these bubbles kind of floating past you. And they're just sort of floating around, similar to what you guys are doing, um, floating around the, the, the carnival and just seeing things. And then at some point, uh, they kind of float back and land on the platform. And then the bubble pops. And... Oh, sorry, it actually says... Some people are um, uh, moving their, their bubbles around to certain locations and then popping them on purpose, and then they just end up at that location. Huh. Ends up falling to their doom. It uh, it doesn't seem to pop unless they're close to the ground. So how disappointing! <laughs> that sounds really disappointing. Yeah, we're we're gonna run we're gonna run that other campaign another time. <laughs> <laughs> the dark version of the carnival. Yes. <laughs> All right. So the next thing you see is the mystery mine, but because most of it is underground, I don't think. You can see it. Well, actually, let's see. Carnival, or the mine carts laden with fairgoers trundle into an opening carved like a dragon's mouth, and then carts reappear moments later on the far side of the attraction, with the passengers expressing a mix of bewilderment, fear, and excitement. And near the entrance, a, dwar a male dwarf dressed like a wizard shouts, "Unlock the mysteries of your mind in in the mystery mine." He has bushy eyebrows and wears a pointy hat and holds a large clockwork contraption shaped like a giant eye. Not sure what's going on there. And then uh, you go around. You see the snail racing. There's another race going around. The snails are racing around the track. Uh, looks pretty exciting. But you guys have done that before, some of you. Hall of Illusions, we just described that. Uh, the Pixie Kingdom is really tiny, so you can't really see much from above. Uh, you see people going in there and getting shrunk down. Uh, and then you come back around and over the lost property. And uh, the uh, Displacer Beast there is taking care of some other children now. And then you get back to the uh, end of the ride. Oops. Um, okay. the tree ant is still there, uh, with the squirrel as you guys come out of the ride. I actually had a really good time on that ride. It was just relaxing and nice to get above everything and not have to like have all these weird things happening once you got past the uh, dwarf, uh, falling. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Well, if so, like, fell asleep on her dragonfly. It's <laughs> <laughs> <Ix> wrong. <laughs> she, like, after getting kicked off, she just lays there for a second, and then she starts waking up. And then she's yeah. like, why does my side hurt? <laughs> you probably got kicked off for trying to intimidate it. Yeah. <laughs> um, that worked on your snail, though. It did work on the snail. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, dragonflies don't seem to give a f about you. <laughs> but you know what? Nobody asked. 
your short little 32 year old ass all right that's why you're running around a carnival looking like a clown bitch <laughs> like you can boss around a snail but you can't boss around a dragon <laughs> I don't think you can do much to a dwarf either. <laughs> I, I know I can kick you in a you... bad spot. I'll leave you here in that pain. I'll fucking do, I'll stab you in the balls. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> as as you're walking by the tree, the the tree, tree ant and the uh, squirrel, you hear the tree ant uh, kind of talking to the squirrel and saying or uh, sorry there's someone else there who's uh um who's talking to him and uh it's a um uh uh a, a halfling not the one you met before and he says uh you overhear the the treant say i'm not really supposed to tell anyone this but uh the carnival can't run without Mr. Witch's pocket watch. I hope he never loses it. <laughs> she, like, unconsciously stuffs her hand in her pocket. Like, who the fuck knows? Who would you tell? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you notice he's, he's, like, talking really loudly, so if anyone was listening, you, you almost feel like he is targeting you out, but he doesn't seem to be looking at you when he says it. Yeah. He just seems like he's just talks really loud. Yeah. She's she's a little psyched out. She's like, alright, I think we should leave. Let's go over there. Like, all the way over there. <laughs> <laughs> alright, so it's getting a little later. Um, you basically have time for one more um event and then it will be the time for the uh um crowning of the witchlight monarch yes so after seeing all those things is there any that kind of stood out to what you want to do you guys can pick it's whatever she's a little too freaked out right now to decide on where she wants to go Hmm. I didn't hear that. What was that? Still can't hear you. Yeah, you're muffled. You covering your speaker? Are you talking to you. a pillow? <laughs> <laughs> one laying in the bed. You would think I would be the one talking into a pillow right now. <laughs> what is he saying? I have no idea. He's on the other side of the house. <laughs> oh my Jesus. I got a kid laying on top of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I can hear you now. Pick choices you're not comfortable with. Say what? Um, Pick a choice you're not comfortable with. Uh, the, the the pony ride. She would hate that. Yeah, we could go talk to that that person there because they were sad earlier. Okay, head over to the carousel. I know something. So, um, so yeah, you see the, uh, the ride is, uh, this costs another take a punch. So that will be, um, uh, and you'll have enough for that. Uh, da, da, da. uh, you see her greeting the, um, uh, it greets you with a good humor, but you see now even closer, you see the sadness behind her eyes. Um, she, uh, and so, someone mentions, um, that they didn't expect to see any centaurs here, um, or that they really love centaurs or something like that. And she says, she's actually a human who made a bad deal. 
Not not actually a centaur, she says. And uh, her name is Diana. Princess of Themyscira. Sorry? No, no takers. I said Princess of Themyscira. <laughs> no. Diana? <laughs> That's interesting. Um, it, was, it was interesting. So, uh, yeah, do you have um, any questions for her before you get on the ride? Um, Calypso, like, just now kind of, like, settles out now that she's away from the tree that psyched her out. And she... She realizes where they're at. She's like, what the f When did we get over here? This is stupid. I'm not getting on that. <laughs> You're getting on the horse whether you like it or not. I'm not She's getting on that horse. I'm not Just getting get on the get on it. Horse. Yes. No. Yes. We will strap you to the horse. I would rather die. No, you want to get on it. You know you do. I don't want to get on the horse. I literally get on it. It's looking at me funny. I don't like it. You can't escape. Kinky. It's ride. funny. It's looking yeah. at me funny, and I don't like it. I'm not getting on that horse. Then don't stare at it. Just get on it. I don't want to get on it. Do I need to ride it with you so you won't be so scared? No. That's dumb. Don't say that. It's stupid. Then get up on it and quick and show everybody you want to There's like a little, a little hint of a of a maybe in that tone of voice, though. <laughs> you gotta do it now. You better get your ass up on that horse. You. Here, I'll grab her and I'll put her on the horse it's and you like join in the horse. Noises she doesn't leave. Athletics check. I will tie her down. Athletics I'm check. Athletics check right now. Okay. <laughs> to try and get, you get some the... one. I better not. I swear to God, this app is bullying. You get a one. Well, so how do you do? Check, my bad. So if you want to make an opposed uh, uh, check to like grapple, basically, um, then each of you rolls an athletic check or an acrobatics yeah, check acrobatics if you want to escape. 12. So yeah, you roll. You so can how do roll you change it to do whatever? Oh, I can. Um, I can roll athletics. I have like it's five on that. If you roll right, athletics, so she can roll it acrobatics. Like one swipe to the left, and you should get the second street. The second one. Um. And that should be where you can see athletics or acrobatics. I did an acrobatics check, then I got 12. I did athletics, I, I got 24. Fuck you. Mackenzie's <laughs> <laughs> putting you on that horse whether you like it or not. 24. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're uh, you're getting on there. <laughs> yeah, you got to. What's <laughs> up? <laughs> She like just bites his arm as hard as possible, like hoping to draw blood. He probably is a phased. <laughs> He's yeah, probably. But it makes it makes go to ride better, this. So. Just sets off his rage. Just <laughs> an angry little puppy just biting just her arm. Goes, in, goes into a barbarian rage right in the middle of a carousel. Just... Yeah. <laughs> yep. Just ah, get yep. on the horse. <laughs> It's a rage fun. <laughs> fun rage. All right, so you guys um you guys get on to the uh um uh unicorns there and you notice that there um in the uh carousel there are pairs of unicorns. And um uh description here. Uh, there's pairs of them. Uh, the first, and they have a um, a little uh, name tag on its bridle, and some of the names are legible, while the other names are worn and indecipherable. Uh, so the first pair, um, let's see, how many pairs are there? There's four pairs of unicorns. Uh, so do you? Um, each take your own uh, pair of unicorns, or do you guys pair up? 
They're probably a pair up because if they leave me alone, I'm gonna hop off. Yeah, of someone's it. got a pair with Calypso. <laughs> I'll pair with her. I'll, I'll keep her down. Okay, so Carlton and Calypso get on the first pair. Um, you notice that uh, um, the the one uh, name tag is complete. Uh, it says Fortune, but the other name tag uh, you can only make out. Uh, the first letter is B, and there seems like there there might be uh, three or four letters. Dang it! I wish it said three, because then I'll be like Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Fortune <laughs> and Bob. <laughs> Calypso, like in a moment of of quick thinking, is like wait. That bitch over there looks sad. We should go talk to her first instead. Okay. No, we're riding first. <laughs> we're riding unicorns. Like you can see her struggling and possibly trying to get to a knife in her pocket so she can get away. No, don't do that. No. We will Just take gremlin you back noises to that intensify. Treated. She starts screaming in like a different language. I don't remember who it is that speaks thieves as can. <laughs> you can hear every cuss word coming out of her mouth right now. <laughs> thieves can't cussing. I think it's, I think it's Doc. I'm thieves cussing. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, uh, so you, whoever gets on the second um, pair... Uh, we'll notice that the um, the one that can be read is uh, Fall, F-A-L-L, -L, and the other one's name tag can only make out the first two characters in a five-character word, and it starts with P-R. I'm not smart. Okay. Hmm? Well, I'm not picking a horse, so I'm being forced to do this, so. I'm not good with names. Okay, and then the third pair, um, someone gets on one of those, and uh, you see that one of them is, uh, uh, you can read it as stone, but the other one's tag <laughs> reads an M, and then Two spaces and an S. Moss. Interesting. <laughs> what happens when you say that? <laughs> um... So the uh, when you get on the horse on the unicorns, they actually animate. So it's still a wooden horse, but it's animated. Um, when you are on the one that you said moss, um, that one sort of nods its head as <laughs> as it's uh, as it's riding. You broke it. It's a joke. <laughs> It's mentally disturbed now. This is your fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll give Calypso that horse. <laughs> Don't put me on that thing. It might eat me. <laughs> no, I love you. Not in its head. It was definitely not in its head towards you. It loves you. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it, was telling you that that you're, it was telling you that this is your fault that it's mentally impaired that's what's happening <laughs> no it's telling you to get on that horse or we'll take you back to that tree head and you'll be paranoid for the rest of the day I think I'd rather be paranoid thank you let's go <laughs> <laughs> we're still tying you down to that horse okay so Not does anybody I'm, I'm 11 does anyone want to try and figure out the other ones? I do. Okay, so I'll I'll say them again. Oh, that's six letters. Never mind. <laughs> uh, the first pair is um, 
Uh, the one is called Fortune, and the other one starts with a B and has four letters. Oh, that's five letters. Never mind. Five letters. Bad with two Ds. <laughs> e. Bold. I don't she doesn't know, know how to spell. Okay. Okay. Someone said bold, and that horse yeah. turn turns and oh, looks at them. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> well, how do you come? I'm the one naming all the horses. <laughs> yeah. That one looks back at you and goes, mm. They're going to eat your soul. <laughs> <laughs> Bonus? No, uh, it, it um, shakes its head and whinnies. <laughs> make a whinny. <laughs> Blood, but like she's spelling it B L U D because she doesn't know how to spell. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think uh, um, when when uh, uh, Van Moira said uh, bold, the horse did look at her and ah. and nod. Yeah, there's a lot about horses. So you have uh, the first pair and the third pair. So bold is fortune and bold are the first pair, and then the oh, second. The other ones. The second one uh, was fall, and another one uh, that is slightly in front called um, starts with a P R, and three more letters. Hmm. Right. I'll call them bold prism and moss. I don't know. <laughs> uh, when you say prism, it goes and shakes its head. <laughs> it didn't like that one. <laughs> hmm. She says prince, but it's like P R I N S. No, P R E N S. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't know how to spell or how to read. So. Yeah, so it, shake, it shakes its head to that one. He's like, this is rigged. <laughs> uh, so anyway, after you guys ride those for a while and say a bunch of words, um, the, the ride comes to an end. And uh, the um, uh, sad not centaur uh sees you coming off and saw you uh, guessing the, the names. And so he goes, um, do you, uh, what do you guys know about what's going on here? Uh, like absolutely nothing except that it's some freaky shit in your, and then she kind of like stops right there because she doesn't want to say anything that like give away what they're doing. Mm-hmm. She knows something. She's hiding it. Um, and she yeah. goes, are you trying to help or hinder? I guess we're trying to help or something. I don't know. I just want money. <laughs> but I have to help to get it, so. That's all she wants is money. Ignore her. No. I want you to die. That's the other thing I want. <laughs> Quit being heartless. Obviously, that she wants help. Let's freaking help her. I want to get out of here just as bad as she does. She lost to no, something, so I her. lost. I'm talking him. about. I'm talking about Mimsy. I want him to die. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll probably die before you anyway. Yeah, because you're old as fuck. Mimsy's like thirty-two. <laughs> That's really old in child years. For a dwarf, not so much. Um, so oh, she real? says. Uh, she she looks like she's about to try and tell you something um uh important, but then she painfully coughs up a brown tree sap. And uh, and she she has to stop talking for for a little bit, but she looks like she really wanted to tell you something. 
But then this weird thing happened. It's like if the tree ant did something to her. <clears throat> Calypso. Yep. It was like, do you think you could ride it? The the tree is um is not in this area right now. The yeah. the tree ant. Yeah, he was over there with the dragonflies. Yeah. This seems like something but different. Roots can run through things. She was Calypso just asked if she thinks she can ride it down. And uh she um goes to uh to write and then um as she's trying to write something, uh, a bunch of uh mushrooms kind of blister on her fingers and uh and kind of block her from writing anything until she stops and then the mushrooms kind of recede. She shakes her head. She says, uh, if you want to know more, you must speak to the unicorns. And she winks at you. But you must earn their trust. You must learn all of their names. Lovely. Wonderful. Well, we too. <laughs> Yeah, technically, they, there's in each pair, there's one that you know and one that you don't, so you actually have six. <laughs> and then she, uh, if you guys, um, she she um, asks if you're interested. Yeah, I guess. Okay, she, when you say that, she hands you a clay pot of gold paint and some paint brushes. And she says, uh, I'm just going to close the carousel for a short time. We need to undergo some essential repairs. And she goes over to put up a sign. Calypso kind of like passes the pot off. And she's like, somebody else better do this for no particular reason whatsoever. Because somebody <laughs> knows that she can't spell. Yeah. Yet, but They might know from what you said good. already. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, all right, so uh, you've got the first pair, and uh, that's Fortune and Bold. Oh. So we got Moss. You can paint uh, Bold in there, and it um, uh, the horse uh, or the unicorn stamps its foot in uh, and nods in approval. Uh, the third one, you go and write. Um, an O and an S in the between the M and S and write Moss and uh, it does the same thing. And then the uh, so the second one is uh, Fall and then the other one starts with a PR and uh, that horse is slightly in front of the other horse or unicorn. I don't know. Mm. Price. Can't think I don't anything. Know. What did you say? Price. Pride? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the horse nods. Oh my lord. How the frick did I name all three of them? <laughs> you got... I don't know. <laughs> You're good at this, actually. Definitely. Okay, and then the last pair, um, uh, there is uh, one called Stitch, and then the other one has uh, two spaces, an N, and another space. Well, now I'm disappointed because I was going to say Lilo. <laughs> <laughs> Lilo and Stitch, yeah. I would have guessed that, too. My favorite Disney show. I love that. I love that so much. Stitch is one of my favorite uh, Disney characters. He's my favorite, too. <laughs> Stitch is sad. Ohana means family. Ohana means family. 
Prince family. Y'all did that way too well. <laughs> I do it for my kids all the time, so. <laughs> so it only has the N in it. Yeah, just an N. Do Two spaces, an N, and another space. What was the first something? one's name again? Stitch. Stitch. Hmm. Mimsy said Dune. Noon? Dune. Dune. Goon? Yeah. D U N E. Oh, D U N E. Uh, the horse uh, shakes his head. Or the unicorn shakes his head. Calypso at this point is just like looking around to see if she can swipe anything from just some random person while they're doing that. Mm -hmm. Call it wine. Wine? <laughs> wine? wine? <laughs> Might as well grab a drink. Sorry, what did you say? Dude, alcohol sounds good. Wine? <laughs> She's... Yeah, she Call said wine. Wine? It shakes its head. Oh, I didn't like that. Nope. Oh, Dang, this one's picky. <laughs> what about like rune with an R? Uh, it shakes its head. I don't even know why I'm helping. I can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never mind. I'm trying to steal something. <laughs> Stitch and something with an M. Hmm. How would you name a horse with four letters with an N as the third one? <laughs> Oh, we just lost Dot. Oh. Do we, uh... Do we want to end uh, here and you guys can think about it? Yeah. I guess so, yeah. Because yeah. I have no idea. Mm -mm. Alright. Well, you can, uh... You can write that down if you want and try to think of some possibilities. Mark it in the chat here, and then I'll pin it. All right. Um, yeah, I guess we'll uh, end it off here. Um, so, uh, oh, and I have um, been keeping track of experience points. So uh, for next session, um, uh, the two of you would have started at first level, the new characters. So you would be making it to uh, second level. So you can level up your character. Um, and then for Calypso, I believe you... Yeah, you should definitely have enough to make it to third level. So you can now level up and pick your um, your specialty. And for uh, uh, Mimsy, I think that would be two sessions. So uh, Mimsy would definitely be second level. So yeah, everybody should be second level and Calypso will be third level. Yeah, I'm better than you. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, um, so for, are we going to do this on Mondays then each week? I believe so. All right. We will try to uh, get started a little quicker next time. And uh, we should be able to get through this, this last um, part and, uh, and finish off the... A carnival part and then move on to the next part of the story hopefully yes sounds good sounds good so uh yeah thanks for playing and uh we'll see you guys uh next week all right all righty all right
All right. Have a good night. Y'all too. Okay. That is it for the chat. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.